a choice, I would paint my rocks all day. Just because I have so many rocks, you know, like I have a million rocks there that, and I'm always walking past one and like, oh, that's cool. Love to paint that. But then I'm like, where am I going to put all these rocks that I paint? So I have a I have an issue with uh, like painting a rock and then just giving it back to the earth, basically. Because once you put it outside, the weathering of it, all of that, the paint gets chipped off and it's basically gone. And I've had to do that to a few rocks because I painted so many, <laughs> you know, and I don't have anywhere to put them. So I've kind of shifted towards the, the, went to the physical canvas paintings and did all of that until I filled up all of my walls. You see a form in the rock, right? Yes. How does it work when you're painting a canvas or doing one of your digital paintings? Do you go into it with an idea? I, so I go, I go with it in the in the in the same way. So like, take this rock for example that I put in that NFT. So whenever I spotted the rock at the top, I, instead of you know like none of this stuff here, like none of like so all of these like black lines that you see here, those are actual lines within the rock that are already there. You know like like organic lines created from cracks or fractures or stress in the rock or, or erosion from the rain and just over time. All of these lines are basically a crack. So uh, I use those lines to therefore find a familiar shape mm -hmm. in them, you know? Uh, so when I come over here to a canvas, say for instance, like this one, I just randomly create the lines. Mm -hmm. The same way I would find that rock with those randomly created lines. And then I will look into my lines the same way I look into the rock to find something familiar in it. Mm -hmm. And then when I find that, then I'll paint it. You know? okay. So like this one, I kind of saw a bunny, you know, like a, you know, a bunny, like, I don't know if you see it here, but <laughs> anyways, you know, that's what I see. Like, so then this one here, I kind of saw a dog sniffing a little tree. I saw a dog in that one over there as well. Uh, this is one of the ones where I actually don't really see anything. It's more or less just shapes, right. you know, that I just painted, just threw in colors around it. Uh, this is another figure that kind of popped up from my random shapes that I made. So like I was able to see the figure. It's my favorite, actually. Yeah, and then once I had, once I see a figure, then I can put colors in different places to where it kind of brings it out more. Yeah, okay. I mean, your use of color is really incredible. Um, the balance and the, the contrast mm -hmm. that you create work very well. So that is just, happenstance <laughs> you know ask I, like, I never I don't know why or how or that it just is, is. To me. it just is like I just I see it and then like in my mind it looks good so you it's know? a secret <laughs> <laughs> yeah but when I did a commission he asked me to pick the colors for it so it was oh, like no. I'm taking a little bit of the magic out of it it felt like but at the same time he still made it yeah, because I don't like I said like I was telling Megan when I painted that rock, I was like, you can pick any colors you want. Like it doesn't matter what colors you choose, but you need to give me the freedom to add black or white wherever I want to. Right. You know, so then I will put those colors in myself to then uh, balance out any other colors that she chose. So she chose like purple and yellow and gray, gray and uh, dark blue. Yeah, like dark that. blue. Like colors that like I would have never used. Like my, I would never have gone into that using those colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I typically I want to put a red in it. Like, like most of my paintings have some sort of red in it. Mm -hmm. Like it's one color that I'm always kind of like I'm drawn to. So I try to. So when she asked for this rock that I painted for her that had no red, I was kind of worried <laughs> at first. Uh, I was like, can I do this? But then yeah, I did it. It worked out fine. Uh, but I don't really, I don't know why. So, I mean, you know? my other question is, when I was putting all these on the wall and trying to think about how to arrange them, at first it made sense logically to put one painting on each side of the TV, mm -hmm. and I tried a bunch of different configurations, and this actually made the most sense to me. And I like it now because when you're looking at the two paintings in particular, a day to remember really stands out because it's so geometric mm -hmm. in contrast to the really organic yeah, shapes else. around it. And it kind of, it, it stands out in your larger body of work. I mean, what yeah. what made you decide to go really like straight geometric? Uh, Was it planned out? Were you there with a ruler? So this organic style that you see, like with the lines and all of that kind of stuff, like that is basically something that I found in the rocks. Mm -hmm. You know, so from looking at the rocks and seeing the organic shapes and, and lines within the rocks, 
I kind of, whenever I first came over to canvas paintings, uh, that is what I took from the rocks to my canvas paintings. If whenever I look at art myself and like the past art that I have created, like I created a painting when I was like in like third grade that I remember on a chalkboard. And it was like a cubist style geometric paint. I also like balance a lot. Like I like I like to balance things out. So if I had a house over here, normally I put one over here. Uh, it's not necessarily as balanced as I would do now. Uh, but then I wanted to add the uh, like the flames, you know, like a fire. But you can't really do that with geometric shapes. So that's when I came in with the organic shapes and kind of mixture of the two. Uh, and was this all from memory? You know, like we were talking about earlier this morning, if you're painting a still life, you have a table with things on top. Were you looking at images? No, no, I didn't know. Yeah, it was just all kind of thoughts from my head. So that's one of the things too that, I, that, I've, uh, that I've done with my art is that I don't ever really look at something and then paint from that. Right. Like, cause I don't wanna like, I, there's sometimes I feel like I might be copying someone else's art or like doing something along, along those lines. Like I wanted to kind of just be my own. So therefore I pull up everything from inside of my head for the most part, unless I'm trying to like, I made a connect four board, you know, so I made a connect four NFT with the checkers or whatnot, you know? So I, I obviously, yeah, looked at the connect four board when I was making this thing <laughs> and, and measured the lines and in the circles. All right. I need, I need seven across and six down. Like I looked at that and used it as a reference, you know, but that is more or less straight intentional, but the majority of my body of work, it's not intentional at all. And you mentioned, sorry, last question. I no, keep going. <laughs> you mentioned trying not to reference other artists' work, but I know that you are, you know, interested in art movements and artists who've come before. What would you say is a big influence on you? So Jackson Pollock is one of the, like, probably the one artist, I would say, who maybe influenced me in a way, or I'm inspired, was inspired by once I discovered the art. Uh, and that really just goes back to taking a, a college mathematics course when I was uh, going to school to get my automotive degree. And during that time, we were learning about fractal mathematics and fractals and nature and all that kind of stuff. And then um, this was 2011, I think it was. And while I was uh, researching fractals, I came across an article where these uh, Physicists were trying to determine an authentic Pollock painting based off of the fractal map that was in yeah. there. Yeah, I came across this article and I was like, wow, this is amazing. That's really cool. So that led me to learning about Jackson Pollock at the time and seeing his paintings and looking at them and I'm like, oh, wow, this is really awesome. Like, I like those, his artwork, you know? Uh, but I didn't really think about it too much further at the time. You know, like I just was like, oh, that's cool. Kept it in my mind. I still research fractals after I was done with the math. So then I would still kind of come across Pollock from time to time and that that uh, that paper that was written and I'd read about it. Uh, and then it wasn't until I found the art and the rocks that I started recognizing the fractals within the rocks. Okay, so I could recognize the patterns, these organic patterns that created this vision. I, I found a connection between what I learned in 2012 and my rocks and nature and the fractals and all that. And then that led me back to Pollock again as I was painting my rocks. And so that is pretty much what inspired me to move from my rocks to the canvas paintings in a sense of, of like watching Pollock and the way he created his, his drip paintings and the way he's like dancing around them and moving on the floor with the flow. And it was, it was basic harmony is what I saw when he was doing that. And there's a flow and harmony to his work that I was trying to replicate or duplicate within my lines as I'm creating this. So I would basically just move my lines in a random organic way. It's a little bit different when it comes to creating digitally. It's not quite as organically an organic flow, you know. Because like I said on here, these lines are created just in one shot. You know, like one time I drew all these lines didn't really erase anything, put them on there and then paint, you know? Whereas all these other ones, I'm, I might have drawn this shape a few times or added a line and erased the line, you know? Put in color, took out that color, put a new color. Uh, so I lose a little bit of that when I go digital compared to 
the physical paintings. But yeah, Pollock is one of them for sure. I really like him. I think it's really cool how he his art form and it's uh it's I think it's fascinating. Like I love his art. Like, it's just, I mean it's funny, I, I wouldn't have brought Pollock, but as you explain it, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, because the, 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 the two styles aren't alike at all. Like you would never recognize anything moving across each one as far as like, oh yeah, he's, that style comes from what from, is inspired by Pollock. You wouldn't even know right. if you didn't, if you don't look deep and find the connection that I found between the rocks, the natural patterns that mm -hmm. you can find within his paintings as well. They're in the rocks. In his, I don't know how he did it. And I'm still trying to, like to this day, I try to understand like whether or not Pollock knew what he was doing at the time like did he he didn't know about fractals because fractals weren't even really a term until like 1986 or something it was founded by this mathematician uh so like they were obviously there because they're part of nature and part of earth they're in space they're in our bodies like those fractal patterns are everywhere but they weren't really discovered and recognized for where they were until the 80s so there's no way really Pollock could have been able to define it but did he recognize it and know, like, hey, I'm creating these arts that right. have this other connection deeper into nature, you know? Maybe he did, maybe he don't. Um, but it fascinated me to look deeper. Now, question for you. For all the paintings that you do, that, that you hand paint, do you ever say to yourself, okay, I'm going to draw this out on I don't know, a sheet of paper or graph paper or whatever, you know, is used now to say, okay, this, so you can see the design and then uh, you put it on a canvas no. or you, no. it just happens. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't sketch mm -hmm. like you, I guess is what Good you said. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like sketch something beforehand and then put it over here. Like if I'm putting it on the canvas or I'm putting it on the iPad, I take it all the way to the end and then it becomes a piece of my, like my whole body of work. So you're not gonna go find like rough sketches really right. of mine. It's and so you, do you think that you would ever? So there would probably be like no like replication because just to even like have those thought processes again. Unless I was to replicate one of my pieces right. on the canvas, like so like the, like this piece, Grandma, that area that you like, and a bunch of people have like. I'm uh, eyeing that for a certain. Yeah, person. I've <laughs> thought about possibly uh, recreating it on a physical canvas, you know, uh, but it would. Uh, I'm kind of torn about doing it because I I couldn't get it exactly the same if I was trying to do it myself. The only way I could would be if I was able to like project it onto the canvas and then trace my own lines, you know, because even for me, like creating a line the exact same way two times, I might, even if I already made it, I can't really do it because it was all organic and random right. to begin with. You know, so like making, recreating the painting, looking at this and me trying to recreate that, it wouldn't be exactly the same. It would be different, you know. Uh, even tried that for you on those ones that I made for your backgrounds, because you were telling me that this is the color palette that I like, because we did a collaborative one. So I created a background for his art. And uh, so I was actually trying to, in a sense, recreate this again, uh, but not, a, you know, I didn't want it to be exactly the same, but all of the figures that I was creating turned out completely different. Like it was not the same. Uh, I couldn't draw it. <laughs> yeah, I really like that you don't have a pre-process. It's more like just pulling it out of the canvas or the rock itself, even. Yeah, and well, so there's that, no prep work, and it comes straight from your mind in that moment. Exactly, because I mean that's where it started. It really just came down to me walking around and looking at this rock and saying, "Ah, oh, like that's a cool shape. Do I see something in it that I want mm -hmm. to paint?" And then, I mean, there even became a time too where like. I, even if I don't see something I want to paint in the rocks, like something that's familiar, and, but I really like the shape of the rock, I'll paint it anyway. And just paint the abstract shapes that I see in it. And then later on, find something within it. Like even like like the, the rock I made for her, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't see anything in it. I just thought it was a cool rock. It was a cool so rock. then I painted the shapes that, I, that popped out to me within the rock. And then uh, later on, if you want to, you might be able to find something in it. You know, like yeah. you might be able to find uh, something familiar within the rock, mm -hmm. you know, that I paint. I don't know. Think but. about how rocks are formed. There is not like a pre plan it's to it. It's mm -hmm. just like all a very natural process, whether what kind of rock it is, to like think of like your art in that way. It's really cool. And also the interconnections and also the story of like your art. I'm a storyteller, I'm a theater major, and like 
like I'm really invested in like storytelling and also like your way of like saying that like maybe you don't see something right now but eventually you will that like that's something yeah. that definitely struck with me because the more you accumulate information and even the information that you already know there's always going to be like a point of reference that you can always go, always back, go to. back to yeah no and that's that's one of the things that like uh, along my artistic journey that like it inspired me to go further was the fact that like I had painted this rock the, the bird rock right that I, that I first found and I thought was a bird and that I'm looking at it and I see a bird this entire time and then what had happened was I had this rock and instead of setting it up the way that it looked like a bird I set it the other way you know like basically set it down with his nose down and it was just sitting there I didn't put it that way for any particular reason I just set it I was setting it to the side and the rocks you can kind of sit any way you want to and they'll stand up and lean against something fine and it wasn't until like uh like a week later my brother was sitting there looking at it and he was like hey do you see that rhinoceros in the rock that you painted and i'm like what rhinoceros i was painting the bird i don't know what you're talking about like this was supposed to be a bird like i was showing him the bird he's like i don't see a bird <laughs> you know but that's what i was painting but then once he actually pointed it out to me there was a rhinoceros that i had accidentally painted while I was trying to paint the bird. And the only reason why I was able to spot that was because we had turned the rock the other direction. So now what that did is that like kind of kind of blew my mind and I'm like, well, that's super cool, you know? So what happens if I turn these other rocks that way, you know? Or what happens if I keep painting more rocks and then instead of uh, just painting something that I see, maybe something will pop up later on that I didn't even know I painted. You know, so that just kind of pushed me even further to explore not just the rocks, but even even with my canvas paintings. Like like any of these paintings, I'd say but you can turn them another direction, and it looks just as I like it just as much as the first one. You know, uh, can and, you talk about um, also like how if you want to name a piece or if you avoid naming the piece to you know not give that predetermination okay. to someone that it's mm -hmm. a certain yeah thing. absolutely yeah for sure so like uh obviously with this piece is it had a meaning from a point in there that i, I had to name right it needed a name i want people to see this as a day to remember and then be reflected upon that time mm -hmm. right and because that, that's what you're going to recognize from this piece uh but the majority of my works uh might not necessarily have a a name to them just either because I couldn't find the name, like I, did, I couldn't find a connection to find a name. I have to find a connection to name it. Like I can't, I don't just want to throw a name at a painting that has no meaning whatsoever. There has to either be a connection that I find or a connection that like you find or somebody else finds. Like you could say, oh, that's a cool, like, like you could look at this painting that doesn't have a name and then uh, say you see something in it and I'll be like, oh, that's cool. And then like later on down the road, I'll be, I'll name it because you said that, you know, or somebody else said it. Uh, so I have to find some sort of connection myself, but then at the same time, I don't know if that's smart or good or bad. Like, I don't know if I should be doing that because then it's going to influence your view on the pain or it that's, could. I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned the connection to public because that's, you know, at the beginning of his practice, he was making his pain like yeah. autumn rhythm yeah. and he stopped doing so and started numbering them for just that reason he didn't want to tell the viewer what they were looking at mm -hmm. or even make a suggestion yeah I, I don't know if i should like right should it be your own 100 your own experience with it or should i influence you some type of way yeah. it yeah. could be both you could do both so that's kind of wait, what wait, i wait. do uh, but it's 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 hard because like, like take this painting for example, the person who bought this NFT, Jennifer, uh, it's a, a, the work of art itself is super, like she loves it, like the art itself, but the name Grandma really resonated with her to that next level. There's other paintings that I've named and then I see something and then everybody else is like, oh no, we see something completely different, and then I'm like, oh, I shot myself in the foot, you know? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have taken that painting that and left it blank. But it is what it is, right? I, I can't really, it, I, I, I don't know what's right or wrong. So most of the time, if I look at a painting and I uh, immediately get a name, I'll give it a name. If not, I'll leave it blank 
Now, I will say for a submitted... I'm thinking of one of them called Stank Face, where you're yeah. like, you're not sure about that name, whether it's going to resonate with anybody. I didn't, I didn't really care if that one resonated with people, because it didn't in the end. Mm -hmm. Like, it was my own name that I gave this painting called Stank Face. Uh, <laughs> and it, to me, it looked like Stank Face, but then nobody else saw Stank Face in it, and I was a little bit disappointed <laughs> about that. Uh, but it is, I can't go back and change it. Some paintings for the, you know, for the Amazon thing, and then ask for a title, and ask for a description, and ask for all these things. I feel obligated to fill those out, right? I feel like I need to put something in those ones. All right, it needs a title, it needs a description, it needs these things. Well, so how do I describe a painting that I just created out of thin air? That, that, that really was, okay, I, that, how do I describe it? Unless I have a name. You know, so I have to. So sometimes I will find a name, even though it isn't something that I was really necessarily wanting to do. Uh, so I'll find a name for it and then write a description based off of that name that I found. Uh, sometimes it's great, it's perfect. I'm like, oh, this is super cool. I'm glad I named it that. I'm glad I can describe it as this. Uh, but then other times it might be a little bit more forced. <laughs> you I mean, know? untitled is a you know perfectly acceptable yeah. convention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, numbering untitled, I feel like um, actually a bunch of works in the other exhibition right now are not titled because the artist didn't want to yeah. name them. So not titled is also totally acceptable. No, yeah, it's it's so it's, I don't know, like it's it's hard for me, you know, like I feel like I feel like I want to name it, you know, like I could because I think they all have some sort of meaning, at least to me somewhere. I mean, I did, it, I, you create it out of thin air and then you put it onto this canvas or whatever, it has to mean something. Whether or not I can find that meaning, I don't know. You know, some, a lot of times I don't, sometimes I do. Uh, and then I have to, like I said, I have to balance whether or not I'm forcing that meaning or did that meaning come and it's really good and I really like it, you know. So I would say for all of these, I really, I love the meaning for them. Like I love the names that I named them, and I, I, I have a, I, it's, it's good, you know, because but like this one, it'll never get named probably, you know, never, I never name it. And then this one, I'm just leaving alone. It's been so long, I'm not even, trying, I'm not even trying to name it anymore. Like, it didn't, like you can't, it's too late, <laughs> you know, maybe. Names are different. They're it's diff difficult, you know, because like I said, some people connect to the name. You know, they connect to the name and the art, and like if you maybe you missed out on that connection because you didn't name it, you know, uh, that wouldn't be good, you know. But then also, if you, like I said, if I force the name and then nobody doesn't connect with anybody, well, that's not good either, mm -hmm. you know. So I kind of have to find the balance and just I like it all to be organic, you know, I like it just to flow, you know. Uh, and when it does, it does, and when it doesn't, I can feel it, like I can tell it's forced, you know. I can create, I can. Look at a painting I created and be like, no, I don't like that painting because I knew my mindset at the time was just kind of forcing it in there, and it just didn't feel right. You just there's like a intuition, you know. Whenever you finish a painting, when you're like, this is it, it's complete, you know. Like you just feel it, you know, and you know that that's it. And then there's some paintings that like I'll work on for weeks and just never feel it, you know. And then at some point, I just let it be. I'm like, all right, it's done. I don't draw a rep necessarily a representation of something else, you know. Like I, I or I, even I, a feeling, or, or like even like a feeling, mm -hmm. or a, you know, I've never, I've never really pushed my art towards that direction. You know, like if somebody was like, hey, let me sit here and let me try to draw your face or something, like, oh, my, there's no way. Like I cannot do that art. Like it's not my thing. <laughs> you know, like I can't do it. Uh, and like I said, I'd rather it just be organic, and then if I do see something familiar, then I can kind of shape it into that direction, okay. you know? Uh, unless I'm really trying to do something like I like, like I said, when it comes to geometric stuff, like I like to put like windows and stuff, like in, in certain pieces of mine that aren't mm -hmm. all abstract, you know, like I do like to draw those things. Uh, and, but it's typically in a geometric shape, like something that's geometric that I can get a pattern out of like that. I like stars, you know, because you get your geometric points, and I like the circles, you know, you'll see a lot of, you know, not necessarily need, but you'll see a lot of suns throughout my body of work that I put in as a circle, uh, you know, even like on these, you know, like these are mostly, like a lot of my NFTs that I create uh, with my rock, it's, it's a lot of it's geometric patterns in the background. Now, a question for you, um, another one, sorry, um, so, you know, you've 
had this journey, right? Rocks, and then there's Canvas, and then there's NFT, there's digital. What do you think could be next? Uh, honestly, the things that I would like to do would be to paint bigger, you know, like create okay. much larger canvas if I could ever get the, like, get the space. Yeah, a mural would be nice. Yeah, like to paint a big wall or whatever and put it on that would be super cool. Uh, yeah, I would love to do the mural. <laughs> so if that ever comes up, let me know. Uh, but then also, like, speaking in terms of like what I could do in my house, like I would like to paint some of the that, the bigger rocks that I have, because like most of my rocks are small, like mm -hmm. this range. Maybe some get up to be about this big or whatever, but I have some rocks that are like bigger than me, you know, like they're massive rocks that like are huge. What kind of paint do you use? Uh, well, so uh, if it's going to be a big, huge rock, I'll have to use spray paints, you know. Okay, are you going to say car paint or house paint? Yeah, it would be like oil, it's oil. So when I first started painting them, I, I used uh, just cans of spray paint. And that is actually the most durable paint that for the rocks. Like if you spray paint a rock, it's gonna it's gonna stay on there for a long time. Uh, but whenever I started moving over to like smaller like rocks like this that I would like bring inside, I started using hand paints like uh, paint markers. So oil paint markers is what I use on my rocks, uh, and uh, those work fine. But if you're if I was gonna do like a massive rock and leave it outside, it would have to be some sort of spray paint. Because you know? the weather would get yeah, to the weather would get to it. The weather like this paint here, if you leave that outside for a week, <laughs> it starts to come off. Like it starts to build, the sun starts to fade. Like it's, it does not do well outside. Okay. Uh, so you would go spray paints and then some sort of clear coat, a really good clear coat that you would have to reapply over time, you know. Uh, so that would be something that I would like to do is paint the bigger rocks, but I can't do that because you need you need machines to move those rocks. Like you gotta like stand them up. You know, I do have this idea of building uh, pyramids in the backs in my backyard with all these rocks that I have. Like I want to like replicate like uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza, not massive or nothing, but maybe like ten foot by ten foot, you know. And then do like a Stonehenge. I was about you know? to say it's a chiseling stone. Yeah, the next. yeah. So I'm thinking about doing okay. that, you know. I, I don't really know if I'm gonna like bust out chiseling it, but like find rocks that fit together, you know, and then put them up uh, and that type of thing. So that might be next on my list, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. And Tom. I feel like we've had you up here on the spot for a really oh, yeah. long time. <laughs> I'm just going to say if anybody wants to enjoy some refreshments and maybe like look around a little bit. And explain what that means. Okay, <laughs> so uh, undercutting the floor would basically be like you sold your pieces for fifty dollars, okay, and that's what it is across the board. Everybody's buying your piece for fifty dollars, and then somebody comes in there and starts selling your pieces for thirty dollars. You know, they are undercutting your floor. So now your floor price goes from fifty dollars to thirty dollars. I think that's crazy talk. I don't think that people should be doing. That. Uh, not only does it hurt your, the artist, basically their floor price, but also either one, if they bought that piece for 50, now they're losing money, so they're selling it for 30. Or two, the only other way that they got that piece was if you gifted it to them, and now they are undercutting your floor after you gave them a gift. So which I, is not a good look. Which is not a good look at all. So like, if somebody gifts you something, then you should not list <laughs> that piece for less than their floor. Yes. I want to know more about your logo rock and why you chose that rock and uh, oh, yeah. because I, I heard some people commenting about it. They really like 
your logo and, and what it really stands for. Yeah, so the logo rock, which is basically this small little rock here, uh, is just uh, the, it, it's the rock I chose to like represent Rock of Ages. And why I chose that rock, I, it's, 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 it's kind of hard to say, but uh, I was painting a horse head. The, 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 to me, it reminds me of the shape of a horse head, you know, and so therefore I called it the uh, the Fever Stallion. So I had a series at some point that I named my Fever series, uh, and I named it that because I was sick when I was making this series of rocks. So I had a fever. Like, I was actually sick. So like, okay, this would be my Fever series. So then I had <laughs> so you're like Rocky. Yeah, yeah. So I had the. Uh, uh, I had the Fever Stallion, then I also had the Fever Tiger, which is one of these pieces in the collection. So that, that piece went along with it. And the thing about the collection was that uh, I used the, uh, I can't remember exactly, uh, I have the different blue. So I have a dark blue, a light blue, and then just your normal blue. So this this color is my light blue. So within the Fever collection, uh, this is the, the light blue. I also created a piece with those exact same colors, but I used the dark blue. And then I created another piece with those exact same colors, but then I used just the normal blue. Uh, anyway, so the stallion just kind of represented to me, kind of like, you know, you know, horses do work. Like that's their point of working hard and, and putting in labor and doing the work, you know? And like, so that that's one of the reasons why I chose it. Cause I just kind of wanted to represent that. Like I'm here to like create art, but also put in the hard work to that is that it, that it takes to bring my art to the level that I want. So like that's why I'm here and like every day I try to get out and promote myself and promote the art and show it to people, you know, to where to, to get it to to you know I wanna I wanna do exhibitions like this, but then I also wanna build on this and do bigger ones, you know, and do exhibitions in other places. I wanna sell my art, I want people to collect my art, like I want people to know who Rock of AJ's and the brand and AJ Robots is, you know, it's you know and that's my, that's kind of my purpose, you know, that and just sharing the heart with the world, you know? So that logo represents all of that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank everybody for showing up, you know, all my people here, you know, I just love <laughs> that y'all came, you know, that I'm like sure. super cool. <laughs> <laughs> it. Like, it really does, it like, it makes me happy, you know, like, I mean, Megan drove like 10 hours to come out here and see the art, you know, so like, that means a lot, like, you know, that y'all took the time to come out here, so I really appreciate that, and like I said, just Jessica, all of it, it's just, it's wonderful, <laughs> I'm so happy. You know, Thank so. you so much, AJ. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for recording, Megan. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> yeah, Megan's got to, like, you, you need to turn it on yourself. Yeah.